Hey guys, welcome back to another week of What's For Dinner. My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. Our What's For Dinner videos come out every single Tuesday. I typically cook five to six dinners per week. It's just my husband and I eating, and so it just depends on how many leftovers we have. But we are kicking off another week of What's For Dinner by continuing to eat stuff in our freezer and pantry. So this is one of the items that I have in my pantry. It is Annie's One Pot Pasta. You just add half a pound of chicken, and I got this on Kroger and it was, as you can see, on clearance for 75 cents and it was originally $3.99. And I thought maybe um, they were going to discontinue this product, but they actually still have it on the shelves. So um, it is white cheddar broccoli mac and cheese. And there is supposed to be a fourth of a cup of broccoli in each serving. So here is what it looks like. It actually has a pretty good flavor. Now, I don't know how there is a fourth of a cup of broccoli in here. It doesn't look like it at all, but that's what they say. And then we're also just having some green beans. The green beans, again, came from my pantry and they are from Aldi. I cooked up two cans because I plan on using, um, making some green beans maybe tomorrow or some other time this week. I'll just have the leftovers in the fridge. And then for dessert, I made these butter pecan cupcakes. And here is the mix that I used. This was in my pantry as well. I needed to use it. It makes 12 cupcakes. But if you've been following our channel for a while, um, I typically make jumbo cupcakes. So when a recipe um, calls for 12 cupcakes, I just rather have six. It's just easier, I guess, more manageable um, to eat six cupcakes rather than 12. So here they are in the cake platter. This is what they look like. And here is one that I cut open so that you guys can see. Howard and I tasted the cupcakes and we both thought it was pretty good. It's a very light cupcake, but Howard said the taste of butter pecan is very, very mild. And I would have to agree. And, and then for the icing, I just used some regular vanilla icing. Um, but anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight. And we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having some grilled chicken thighs. Howard grilled out for us today. So right here, we have lemon pepper chicken thighs, and this is a seasoning that we used. And then right over here, we've got some jerk thighs, and sorry, let me reach over here. This is a seasoning that we use. This is Howard's favorite seasoning, and every time he makes jerk, this is what he uses. So you can find this at, I found this at Kroger. Um, I found it at, where else? I found it at Walmart too. So this is what he likes. And I made some baked beans. I used bushes, but I always doctor up my baked beans. So um, I fried up some bacon, so that's in there. Um, in the bacon fat, I fried up some bell peppers, chopped bell peppers, I added brown sugar. I also added some spicy barbecue sauce as well. And this is what I use, it's empty now. So use that. And then what else? Oh, we've got some macaroni and cheese. Now, um, I love baked macaroni and cheese, crock pot macaroni and cheese, and I actually have a recipe um, on our channel about that. But when I want a quick baked macaroni and cheese, I use just a box macaroni and cheese, and then I doctor it up. So I prepare it according to package directions, and then I add in about a third of a cup of sour cream, and then I add in um, additional cheddar cheese, I stir it up, I put it in a pan, and then I top it with additional cheese, and for some reason, the sour cream and the extra cheese really changes the texture, and it's really good. So that's just my quick tip if you want a quick macaroni and cheese. And then lastly, I made some potato salad. I don't make it very often because Howard doesn't care for it very much, but I love baked beans and potato salad together for some reason. I just love that combo. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having bow tie pasta with broccoli rob. I made this recipe for the first time last week and Howard liked it so much, he requested it again. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight. Um, oh, what I'll do is I will post a link to that dinner video because that's where I have the recipe posted. So I'll post it in the cards above and then also in the description box. But this is what we're having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. 
Hey guys, so we are not having a fancy meal tonight at all. I am trying to clear out some stuff in my freezer. So we are having french fries, um, shrimp, and hush puppies. So for the french fries, I had a handful of fries in my freezer and that's why you see them on the plate. And I also had a new package of steak fries that I needed to open, excuse me, needed to use. Um, these are from Aldi and these are from Walmart. We're also having the shrimp and um, a while back ago, Kroger had a buy one, get one free on their butterfly shrimp. So um, I have one, or I had one package of the shrimp in my inside freezer, and I have another package outside. Um, I started making these, then I stopped because Howard said he doesn't like crunchy shrimp, but um, we've got to use it. I mean, it's in there, and so we just need to use it. So I finally finished off the package that was inside the house. And now we're gonna start, or next, we're gonna start working on the shrimp that's in the freezer. And then I also have these hush puppies in my freezer as well, just to open those for the very first time. Pretty sure I got them from Kroger. And they're actually not bad. Howard's not a big hush puppy person, but I am. So I did cut one open so that you guys could see it. There it is, I just baked it. You can see the onion in there. And it's really not bad for a frozen hush puppy. I actually baked everything today on one big cookie sheet. So I put all the fries, the shrimp, and the hush puppies on one cookie sheet and I just baked everything. So, so anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, trying to clear some stuff out of our freezer and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having meat sauce with pasta and some garlic bread that I made for in the air fryer. Well, that was my first time doing that and it turned out pretty good. It may be a little bit dark. Um, I cooked it for about, I think it was about eight minutes. So that may have been a smidge too long. But in my meat sauce, I have ground beef and Italian sausage. For the pasta sauce, I used I used this, this was in my pantry. And then I like a chunky sauce, so I added in a can of Aldi diced tomatoes and Kroger diced tomatoes, and of course I seasoned it up as well. Um, this is the pasta that I used. This was in the pantry. It's something that I got from Aldi a while ago. Now typically, when I make um, a meat sauce, I do like spaghetti with it, spaghetti noodles. Um, but I had all these bags of pasta in my pantry that I needed to use because I keep going back to spaghetti and fettuccine, and I really needed to use this stuff up, so that's why we are having it over the rigatoni. And we are having a side salad of um, this dull chopped bacon Caesar. Uh, kit, really easy to put together. Lettuce, cheese, Caesar dressing, bacon crumbles, and garlic croutons. And I just picked this up from a recent Kroger haul and I'll link it in the cards um, cards above and then also in the description box if you wanna see what I picked up during that haul. For dessert, I decided to make this Aldi pound cake. Um, I picked this up on a recent Aldi haul as well, and I'll make sure to link that in the description box and also in the cards above because I picked up some seasonal items from there that you might be interested in picking up. So really easy to make this pound cake. Here it is on the platter. It has a very fine crumb. Here's a piece that I cut on the plate. And in order to make this, um, cake, all you need is water, melted butter, and two eggs. And I've never made a cake before with melted butter. Softened butter, yes. Melted butter, no. It turned out well. I wasn't sure what to expect and if it would change the texture. But it's really good. It has a very fine crumb. Um, you bake it on 350 for, um, where's the time I just saw? Oh, 50 to 55 minutes. And I was using a uh, nonstick pan, so I baked mine at 325, and I ended up baking it for 53 minutes, and this is how it turned out. So this is uh, what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so I tried a new recipe tonight. It is called cheeseburger soup, and I found it because I was trying to figure out a way to use up this cream of bacon soup that I had in my pantry. I think the only reason I bought it was because it was on the shelf and I'd never seen it before. So I bought it a while ago and stuck it in the pantry and wanted to use it. And I also had a can of um, 
cheddar cheese soup as well. And cheddar cheese soup is not something I normally buy. I'm sure I bought it for a recipe and now I don't remember what it was originally for. But I used those two cans to make the um, cheeseburger soup and it was it's, it's t I tasted it. It's really good and it's really easy to make. So all I did was brown some um, ground beef and a medium onion, sauteed that, drained it, and then I added in the, the soups over here. And then I added in two cups of milk, some seasoning, and then I added in some fully cooked bacon, chopped, and some cheddar cheese. And here it is, I just garnished it with more bacon and more cheddar cheese. So I'll make sure to link the recipe in the description box. But this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time.